Hello, greetings to everyone. Um, here I am again to work on another in the series of um, Zentangle inspired art. And so, first of all, I thank you again, whoever sent me this. I don't know who sent it to me, but I love it. I've got my pens in there. I've got papers in here ready for um, tangling. I have my little notepad in here ready for tangling. And it is just ready for tangling. And I love this. It has the two zippers to go around. The color is perfect. I love this. So thank you whoever sent that to me. Today we're going to talk about simple frames. And um, one thing you, if you ever go to like an art museum, very rarely do you see an art piece that is not framed. The frame accentuates it. The frame around your art piece really is a part of the art and it adds to the, the art. Sometimes no, sometimes you don't need a frame, but, <coughs> excuse me, in, <coughs> in my case anyway, I always like to have a frame of some kind. And so what I'm going to show you now is the simple, a very simple frame. So I'm going to frame this, this square. And so what I'm going to do first is to do, um, I'm going to go around and, and just, and I'm not using any kind of a ruler. I have a ruler here. I could use that and make perfectly straight lines, but I'm not going to do that. Then, okay, so I did the first line, and now I'm going to go with a second line real close parallel to the first one. So I'm echoing that line, and I'm going inside, and I'm going to do that second line real close to the first line and just echo that line. Put my crooked where my crooked is. Okay, now I'm going to go inside again. And I'm going to, this time I'm going to leave a little space here. Because I'm going to do something in the space. So I'm going to now go like this way. And... And this one, too, I'm going to now do that second R line inside. And I'm not using, like I said, not using a ruler because I do believe that your lines, when they're not straight, um, actually make the whole thing look more handmade. Like it's a hand-done piece of art. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, now this is going to be just a simple one, and you can do so many different things inside of your frame. So here we would, um, I'm going to just make a, uh, like a curved line, and that's in that wide space. This is like a vine, vine line. And I just went inside that whole thing with just that vine. And then I'm going to periodically, in spaces of the line, I'm just going to make like a little curly cue. Here and there, some on the inside of the line, some on the outside of the line. And just until I'm happy with that, but I'm still going to put leaves. So I know that I need to make a little leaf, a little bit space, because I'm going to put leaves on it too. Okay. We need one over here. And so then here we go with a few more curly cues. And I like curly cues. Okay. 
So now I have curly cues on my frame. And, and that could be enough of a frame even right there. But I'm going to go on then and to make some, uh, just a few leaves. And so I'm going to make my leaves come out of, like here where the curly cue went on, I'll put just a little bit of a line there and then a simple leaf. You see, it's so simple. And then here I'm going to go with a simple leaf. And here. And when I do my simple leaf, all I do is make a line coming out from where that curly cue is connected. I make a, just a little line come out and then make that like a teardrop shape almost. Like an upside down teardrop shape. But leaving a part of that little line showing inside the leaf still. Let me see. I'm going to draw one back here. So, um, see, like here's the curly cue and here's the vine. And so the line here, and then when you make the leaf, leave part of that line inside the leaf. And that makes that leaf look almost more real that way. Now, although I don't really do much at all of reality in my art, most of it is um, fantasy or um, mythical or just, just fun. I don't do a whole lot of anything trying to be make it look real because if I try to do something to look like a photograph well I might as well just take a photograph instead and so mine are more um there's a word I'm trying to think of and it's not coming to me um and then I can go through here then and I can color each one of these leaves green or purple it doesn't matter what color they're your leaves and right now it's fall so maybe orange would be a pretty color to make this whole try to get inside each one of those little spots I got them all. Okay, so that's it. That is my frame. That is my frame with just a little vine. So I did a double line on the outside, double line on the inside, and put the frame, the vine, on the inside of the frame. Okay, now what I want to do is I am going to, I am going to, I'm going to color my, I'm going to, I'm going to give it some color. Just a minute, i got to reach over here. I didn't put my... Okay. Oh, there they are. There they are. Okay. Now, I'm going to use my Artesia paint, um, little paint pens. I love these. I do love these from Artesia. I have to say, I like painting. But the one part of the painting that I'm not real crazy about is the um, getting out the water, getting out the brushes, getting out all of those things. I just, you know, I'm not a real getter-outer very good. I'm not very good at being a getter-outer. Okay, let's see what I'm doing here. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm making a big fat mess. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to color my leaves green. Now like it? Get upside down. Okay. This is a kit from Artesia that has 48 different colors in it. And I love this. I love this. Okay. And so, and they're a real brush paint tip. And so, as you can see, it comes to a nice little point. And so, put on my glasses here. Um, helps helps to see now I'm going to just go ahead and paint just the um 
the leaves. And now, now, now you, this, this here, doing a frame like this, if you're just doing a, like a quote or something inside, a zentangle, whatever little art you want to do. Um, I love quotes. Quotes are one of my favorite things. And so, and, and you learn so much, I think, also from quotes. All right, let's see. I don't want to say these pens are awesome and then I make a big mess with them by going too quickly. So, but once you color in these, in, in these, um, in the leaves, oh, that leaf doesn't even look like a leaf. We'll make it look like a leaf. All right, so um, I think I'll just put a quote inside of my my frame. So be thinking of a quote, and um, while you're working on your on your frame, then then just be thinking of a quote that maybe you would want to add. Now, see, I've done the, the leaves. I gave the leaves some color, and um, then I want to, maybe I'll use, uh, like, an orange. And I'm going to go, uh, with the orange, I'm just going to go into the frame. But some of my leaves go over the frame, so, I mean, go over the border of the frame, so, and then, and then again, because I didn't use a ruler, some parts of this little border of my frame are wider than others. And then when you start putting the color in it, you'll see how that um, the change in size really give it more, more dimension and more pop and just, it just, looks really nice. Now, if you used a ruler and got all of these lines just perfect, um, then I don't think there will be as much character. Now, you might be a little OCD when it comes to drawing your lines and want to learn, want to use uh, a, a ruler, and that's okay, too. And then also, let me tell you, this is watercolor. These are watercolor paint pens. And so if you paint out, if your color goes outside the line, then that's okay too. You do not have to stay within the line. Now, a lot of times we learn in kindergarten when you're coloring that you want to um, stay within the line. And but actually... In real life, you don't have to stay within the line. If you're painting a wall, you don't want to paint a purple wall and then get purple paint on the woodwork. You want that to be yellow, you know, or whatever. But um, so then you got to be stay within the lines. But doing something like this, don't worry about staying within the line. If it goes outside the line a little bit, then that is gives it even more of a watercolor effect. And it also gives it, set like right there, I just made a little bit outside the line. And I don't let that bother me because I let that be part of my artwork. Now, there's so many different things that I could still do with this frame. I, I would maybe put some, well, right now I'm thinking maybe I do want to. Now, see, there now how my frame looks. I feel like I need a little bit more color in here because I'm one that loves color. So I'm going to do a few little orbs here and there. But what it's going to be sort of like is just clusters of orbs. Like I'm just making three here and there and here. And they can be berries on my 
on my vine. And these are now just giving it a little, this is to give it a little bit more color. They can be some kind of berries. Should we make them blueberries? If I color them blue, they're going to be blueberries. Do blueberries grow on a vine or on a bush? Well, guess what? We're not worried about that. They're going to be growing on this here vine. Okay, so now I have made my clusters of three little orbs here and there. I'm going to take my blue pen, pink pen, real brush pink pen, and I'm going to color them blue. So they're going to be blueberries. I'm just painting them. I call it color, but I'm actually painting because these are real brush paint pens. And I'm still thinking about my quote. And so I'm getting a few. Now, I could have made this look very autumn if I would use the autumn colors. So, see, you can go with whatever colors you want to use. You can make it look very Christmassy by using um, the Christmas colors, and these would be holly berries. And so, but there. Now, I like that better because now I have... Um, more color in it. Now I could go even further and color the whole inside of this with a maybe a real light blue colored pencil and have that whole thing colored. I mean, it, the options, it's up to you. And so, um, oh, excuse me, let me see. I think what I'll do when I when I go get ready to do a um let me find my pencil. Of course it's in my thing and I put my paint pens on top of it. I got a pencil in here. No I don't. I took my pencil out of there and didn't put it back in there. But let's see. Where did I put my pencil? My blue so lucky pencil. It was right here. Oh well. A lot of things. Well I'll use this one. This is another lucky pencil. I'm going to say, um, plant seeds of love. Plant seeds of love. So I usually go over with my pencil first now. And so P-L-A-N-T, there's five letters. So the middle is going to P-L-A. The middle letter is A. So I'm going to go with the A first, right in the middle. And that way I know I'm going to have my word um, centered. S-E-E-D-S -E -E is also five, so I'm going to put, this is already five, so I want it just a little bit smaller than this, so I'm going to go um, S-E-E, -E. this is going to be the E here, and the E here, but I'm going to just scoot them a little closer to each other, so that word just is a little bit smaller. Plant seeds of love. And I want to get love in here. Um, oh, and then it looks like I got that a little bit not right, it not exactly centered. So I'll put an explanation point here at the end. Now it's centered. Okay, so now I did that with pencil. You can probably hardly not see it. So I'm going to go over my pencil with my pen now. And I can erase the pencil lines. Now, as you see, I went kind of fast over those. I went kind of fast 
me see if I can scoot you up a little closer. I can't see it when I look at myself. And then... Okay, now I'm going to go again. I'm going to go again. And I'm going to write again. I, but I'm going to take my time. I'm going to go over it, but I'm, going, I'm not going to take my time. I'm going to go quickly. Plant. Seeds. Of. Love. Explanation point. Now I'm going to take my eraser and I'm going to erase the pencil line. We'll get them pencil lines erased because I don't need those on there anymore. And so now when you erase, hold on to your hold on to your um paper that you're writing, that you're erasing so you don't wrinkle it. Now, as you look at this, you can see how those lines, two, I wrote it twice, and they don't line up. See, they don't line up. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go into every one of those spaces along with my blue, because I have my blue and the blueberries. So, so now you see, like on that P, you can see where the lines of the P did not line up, and there's a space. I'm going to go in every one of those spaces, and I'm going to give it some blue, just where those spaces are. Oh, my A is really off kilter. And so I'm going to go in them spaces, and then the N... Every one of those spaces. And so now the, the bottom, the, the up and down line of the T seems to be nice and together, but the top line didn't, so I fill in them spaces. Now the S, I really did good on that one. I've got space to paint to really make that S look pretty. Oh, this E turned out pretty close. And then this E is different. I didn't get that one just as close, so I'm filling in them spaces with my color. And this really gives you a one way of lettering that is so simple. It is so simple and so quick, but it gives you a real sense of artistry. Once you put your color in and to me, I think this is beautiful. This is beautiful. And then I'm going to go in my exclamation point and I'm going to paint those spots. And that is my finished I could go for the further if I wanted to, but see, there I just, with a frame on the outside, and then your little quote in the middle, how pretty that looks. And because of the way I wrote the wording in there, the lettering, it, all those little space, and I did it so quickly. And But see how I centered it by putting the middle letter first and then kind of do it that way. Then um, uh, sometimes I've put in a word and it wasn't centered, so I'll put maybe just a star up here in the corner or something, a star or something. And it it's amazing how putting a little something... If, if my of was a little too far over this way, maybe I would put a, like a, another leaf with some berries right there. And then that would center that word and fix it. And so, but that's what I wanted to show you today basically was, um, a frame. So anything, and, and now when you do your frame, you could break this frame up into spaces and you could do your tangles. 
you could do different tangles all along that. I might break this up into um, four spaces on each side or three spaces on each side and um, and then do a tangle in each space. And that would be really, really pretty. And so this is day three on my nails. Or is it four? Well, I don't know. But um, they still haven't shipped or nothing. Everything, it's just like when I put them on. So anyhow, yeah, we're doing a test on the nails here, and they're working out good. Um, what did we call her? Color Street Nails. So it's not nail polish. It's a peel and stick nail polish. All right, so there we go. And now I'm going to give you something to think about in my reading. We'll see. We'll get out this world book believe. I love that look. Okay, and I'm going to, um, let's see, what, something I haven't read. Just find something I haven't read. Oh, I, I, I've probably read to all of this. Okay. Believe you might be that light for someone else. You do build... Okay, you do build in darkness if you have faith. When the light returns, you have made of yourself a fortress which is impregnable to certain kinds of trouble. You may even find yourself needed and sought by others as a beacon in their dark. That was written by Olga, Olga Rose, Rosemanis. Rosemanis. Let me read that again. You do build in darkness if you have faith. When the light returns, you have made of yourself a fortress which is impregnable to certain kinds of trouble. You may even find yourself needed and sought by others as a beacon in their dark. Believe you might be that light for someone else. And you know, there is a lot of people without even knowing it are a light for someone else. And I have met people like that that have just let, just left a mark on my soul just by one little thing they did, one little thing they said just anything and but that thing or the thing they said or whatever has left that mark on my soul that made me a better person and so you know you've heard people say what goes around comes around well that's it that's that's kind of the same thing. Okay, I want to ask God to watch over you every step you take, every move you make, and and do something with frame it. When do a piece of art and frame it, put a frame on it. Okay, God bless you all. May He watch over you every step you take, every move you make. And I will see you on the next video. God bless.